We can accomplish these great things and so much more. All we need to do is start believing in ourselves and in our country again. It is time to show the whole world that America is back, bigger and better and stronger than ever before. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. God bless you and good night. I love you. Following the U.S. presidential election, the political conversation has centered on Donald Trump's promise to make America great again. Will he succeed? America will return to glory, but not because of any man. Find out how next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. I'd like to discuss a new book I've written, and uh, it's titled Great Again. And this is the first time that I've offered it on television, and I uh, want to discuss it today. Uh, my book was actually published this summer, and at about the same time, the president-elect, Mr. Donald Trump, produced a book with the same title. So they came out about the same time, and I didn't know anything about his book at all. First, he originally uh, wrote his book entitled, uh, put the title on as Crippled America, and then later changed it to Great Again. Now, I think if you compare these two books that you'll, you'll find uh, it, the comparison very interesting because they are frankly, polar opposites when they tell you how to make America great again, how it's going to become great again. And I think this is not all just coincidence because I think God wants Americans and all people in the world to have a choice to see which way they should choose, to choose life, as the Bible says. Now, the... Uh, Americans are going to become more crippled unless they understand what is written in this new book of mine. And it's based on the Bible. It's not my idea. It's what God says is going to happen. This applies to America as a nation. It applies to individuals. God is giving us a choice. He always presents us with a choice. Now, it says that in Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. That is a prophecy for all time, and specifically for this end time. If you go on to the next chapter, it'll tell you uh, it's discussing the latter days, the time that we're living in right now. So that is just routinely done in the Bible. Let me give you a quote from Peggy Noonan who wrote for the Wall Street Journal and had this to say about the recent presidential election. She says, quote, a closing thought, God is in charge of history. She wrote, he asked us to work, to try, to pour ourselves out, to make things better. But he is an actor in history also. He chastises and rescues. He intervenes in ways seen and unseen, or chooses not to. 2016 looks to me like a chastisement. That is from God. That's what she's saying. He's trying to get our attention. We have candidates we can't be proud of. We must choose among the embarrassments. What might we be doing as a nation and a people that would have earned this moment? I think that's a powerful statement that she made to us and gave us. I think it's a very powerful statement that we all need to understand. She says God intervenes in ways seen and unseen, and He chastises us for what we have done that is not right, that is wrong. Now, 
Obviously, she thinks he's a flawed candidate and cannot make America great again. And she believes this is coming upon us because God is correcting us, is chastising us. And that is exactly what Bible prophecy discusses in very great detail. Peggy Noonan says that uh, God is trying to get our attention. Now, we've been trying to do that at God's inspiration for 70 years. And there's been a ton of new revelation about the Bible in that process. And yet, it isn't easy to get people's attention. But God does speak to them, oftentimes in a still, small voice, as He says in 1 Kings 19. He doesn't always come to us in earthquakes and fires and and thunder and lightning as He did on Mount Sinai when He gave the Ten Commandments. Now, I would say this, Mr. Trump has raised some vital issues in the run-up to the election, and still is, and for that we are all grateful. But there's something terribly lacking, and what is it? Well, my book, talks about that and tells us how to correct those problems that we're facing. On the uh, eve of the election, CBS News with Bob Schieffer made this comment about the, this, what he called a, a horrible election. Quote, I have seen a few, but I've run out of ways to say I've never seen one like this. It's as if the nation is enduring some kind of curse. What should we expect next, that it will rain frogs? I wouldn't be against it. I hope we know what he's talking about when he says raining frogs. That was one of God's plagues, a part of one of the plagues anyhow, that God rained down on ancient Egypt. And ancient Israel was enslaved at the time, and God was freeing them, and He plagued Egypt, sent ten powerful plagues to make them let Israel go and have their freedom. Now, he just slightly refers to this biblical example. But we have a few commentators beginning to talk about God and the Bible in these terrifying times that we live in. And that's a good thing, but they need to go a lot more deeper than what they are because, well, I I would imagine a lot of people didn't really know what Mr. Sheeper was talking about when he talked about the uh, raining of frogs, that is, raining them down. So if we have men uh, men and women on the... uh, television and writing articles and that type thing, they are, they are talking about God occasionally, but not very much, and not very many of them are doing that. He refers to the presidential election as a curse. That's what he calls the entire election. Is that going to produce a candidate that's going to be able to make America great again? Well, he doesn't think so. Peggy Noonan doesn't think so. And those are certainly two prestigious organizations we're talking about. First of all, we have to understand that men didn't make America great in the first place, nor did they make Britain great in the first place. God did that. Those are the two birthright nations that we talk about. And if you don't understand about who the birthright nations are and who Israel is, you need to write and request our book by phone if if you can. Whatever way you, you want to request it, you just about can do that. But it is the United States and Britain in prophecy, and we offer it all the time. But God is what 
is the one that should be given credit for that. And we don't really give God credit for that today. But this new book of mine will explain that to you and show you why what these commentators and writers are talking about is, is really just slightly getting into the issue that we need to get into. And that is looking to God. About two or three weeks before the election, Hillary Clinton was leading by seven points in the polls, and I said at the time that I was leaning toward Mr. Trump winning. I wasn't making that statement because of maybe uh, what other people would reason and the way they would reason, because I was referring to a prophecy in your Bible that refers to that election and who would win that election. And I believed that prophecy did refer directly to the election, and I think the uh, evidence is there now that it did just that. But anyhow, I sent this co-worker letter to our people and explained all of that in detail. And I, if you would like a free copy of it, we'll send that co-worker letter to you. God is is really concerned about the 2016 election here that we've, we've had in the United States. He is concerned, and why would he be? Why would God be so concerned about what's happening in our election? Now, we need to understand that because God is, after all, going to chastise the people called Israel in this end time because of their abominable sins. He says that over and over. Let me read to you something about our ancient history. Well, not so ancient at this point, but at least past history. Andrew Roberts wrote this, a historian, and he said, War has been the almost constant lot of mankind since the days of Rome. Yet the English-speaking peoples have presided over a longer period of peace between the great powers than at any time since the Dark Ages. And then Winston Churchill said this in 1938, quote, It is the English-speaking nations who almost alone keep alight the torch of freedom. Now, that's quite a statement. He says, look, and of course, at the time, Britain had a a global empire, and it was beginning to descend in a certain, into a certain amount of darkness, but it still was a great empire. And history teaches us that all empires eventually fail. They always have. That's the way it is. But here is a time when the Churchill says the English-speaking nations who almost alone keep alight the torch of freedom. Why is it that other nations don't do that? Well, God says these nations are Gentiles and they don't have the same goals that Israel has. And America and Britain are the descendants of Israel and are the primary uh, two nations of Israel in this end time because they're the birthright nations. And God is concerned about them and he's, because He has directly blessed them. But what happens when America and Britain fades from the scene since they have basically kept freedom for mankind for over 200 years and now both of them are fading into the background and being very weak? What does that all mean? Well, let me tell you, it is prophesied in your Bible. Over and over and over again, it's prophesied. I want to read you just a few quick quotes from Charles Krauthammer in the Washington Post. That's December the 1st. And he said, 25 years ago, December 1991, communism died, the Cold War ended, and the Soviet Union disappeared. It was the largest breakup of an empire in modern history, and not a shot was fired. 
That dawn marked the ultimate triumph of the liberal democratic idea. It promised an era of Western dominance led by a preeminent America, the world's last remaining superpower. The, that era is over. The autocracies are back and rising. Democracy is on the defensive. The U.S. is in retreat. Look no further than Aleppo, a Western-backed resistance to a local tyrant. He backed by a resurgent Russia, an expanding Iran, an array of proxy Shiite militias, is on the brink of annihilation. Russia drops bombs. America issues statements. Well, what's so bad about that? Well, if, if freedom grows, goes along with Britain and America retreating, then what is going to replace it? Well, here's what Mr. Krauthammer said. What better symbol for the end of that heady, liberal, democratic, historical moment? The West is turning inward and going home, leaving the field to the rising authoritarians, Russia, China, Iran. And I'll add one to that list, a German-led Holy Roman Empire that's about to burst out on the world scene as a superpower. And they're going to really change the course of history in this world. See, all of those are Gentile nations. America is an Israelite nation. Britain is an Israelite nation. And you can prove that from your Bible, and it's not even that difficult. And our book on the United States and Britain in Prophecy certainly does that. And we've been sending out, well, over the years, millions of them some six million. Let me read to you about the times of the Gentiles in Luke 21 and verse 20. Verse 20, And when you shall see Jerusalem, that's a, the ancient capital of Israel, and it's a type of Israel in this end time, all Israel, but specifically two nations, America and Britain. But he says, Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. For well, these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Well, wrath upon which people? I mean, these are Christ's own words. We have to know which people He's talking about. And if you don't know who Israel is, well, you, you can't know who God is talking about. Who are these people? See, for over 200 years, we've had the times of Israel. Today, we have the times of the Gentiles, and it is frightening. Notice verse 24, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Well, now, Christ's own words, who are the Gentiles? We most of our people, anyhow, don't know. We don't know who they are. And then verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now, there it is. It's going to, all of this is going to usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ. And that's how America is going to become great again. America and Britain are going to become what the Bible calls the chief nations in the wonderful world tomorrow after Christ gets here and He's on the verge of returning very shortly. And all these troubles you see out there are, are just one giant sign that Christ is about to return. He has to, or there would be, as he said in Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22, no flesh saved alive. He has to return. Verse 29, and he spoke to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, that is with blooms and blossoms, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now near at hand. So likewise you, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is near at hand. In other words, it's like a tree. It's like a, a 
blooming and blossoming in the springtime. You can see it. You know the time is here. You can see it by looking at all these events. You know it's close to the second coming of Christ. And is Christ chastising Israel today? Yes, He is. You see China dominating the East now. The Philippines have turned away from America to China as a partner. Malaysia's done the same. Others are certainly planning on doing the very same thing. Mr. Krauthammer talks about what is the, the appeasement that's been going on, how we have been appeasing Russia especially, and even China as well, but mainly Russia uh, in the last eight years. And, uh, and, and Mr. Krauthammer says that uh, Mr. Trump wants to continue the pullback or the retreat though for entirely different reasons. Then he goes on to talk about, Gene Kirkpatrick talked about after the Cold War was over that it was time to give up the 20th century burden, maintaining world order and making superhuman exertion on behalf of universal values. Two generations of fighting fascism and communism were quite enough had we not earned a restful retirement. And Mr. Krauthammer said, at the time I argued that we had earned it indeed, but a cruel history would not allow us to enjoy it. Repose, or to lie at rest, to take a rest. <laughs> Repose presupposes a fantasy in which stability is self-sustaining without the United States. It is not. We would incur not respite, but chaos. And that's what you see. Look around the world and you see the chaos. Mr. Krauthammer is one of the best commentators on foreign policy that we have, perhaps the very best. And he doesn't think that Mr. Trump is going to make America great again. Well, then how is America going to become great again? Because the Bible says it is, and so is Britain, and so is the Jewish nation in the Middle East. And we need to know why. In my book, describes that to you and explains that to you. But there's one thing that Mr. Krauthammer does not know, that all of this is prophesied in your Bible. And we, can, we prove that to you, and my book will prove that to you, my book on Great Again. Here's what the Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert stated in June 2005 to the Israeli Policy Forum in New York, quote, We are tired of fighting. We are tired of being courageous. We are tired of winning. We are tired of defeating our enemies. In other words, now he's saying they're too tired to even survive. You can't grow tired in this world. You can't do it. Or you have the times of the Gentiles and that means war after war after war. And now you can see all this, this uh, coming to pass just like God said it would. But uh, just think about this for a moment. That Russia and China are partners with the, the leading terrorist sponsor nations in the world. And Iran is the number one by far. And they're even helping them build the nuclear bomb. This is what we're facing. Can we ever, if we kept our values, can we ever be friends with Russia and China who think like that? This is the times of the Gentiles we're talking about. It's no longer the times of Israel, except for that chastisement that, that Peggy Noonan talked about. See, for over 200 years, we, it's been the times of Israel. And even today, Mr. Trump talks about taking care of ISIS. I haven't heard him say much of anything about Iran, about taking some measures to stop them because they're getting control of the entire Middle East and they're supporting terrorism 10,000 times more than ISIS. If you look at the big picture, and Mr. Krauthammer says this is Mr. Trump's biggest weakness, the way he views it, or at least one of the biggest ones. 
But we have explained a lot of these things for years, and, and people need to really pay attention. We've, I have quotes here where in our ancient history, America expected to be themselves to be an example to the world. And, the, and that's what God has chosen us to do. That's really what the birthright is all about, to be an example to the world. Show them how to live, how to have peace in their family and in their uh, families, in their national family and all of that. But they've forgotten that history. Lyman Beecher said that the nation was destined to lead the way in the moral and political emancipation of the world, the whole world. I'll just give you one last quote. We must consider that we will be a city upon a hill. The eyes of all the people are upon us so that if we deal falsely with our God in this work, we have undertaken and so cause Him to withdraw His present help from us, we shall be made a story and a byword throughout the world. And that is precisely what Bible prophecy says. But we are going to be a city upon a hill. This, this nation is going to be a nation upon a hill. So is Britain and so are the Jews in the Middle East. In just a few short years, that's a wonderful time for us to look forward to. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. Following the U.S. presidential election, the political conversation has centered on Donald Trump's promise to make America great again. Will he succeed? America will return to glory, but not because of any man. United States President-elect Donald Trump touched the hearts of millions of Americans with his campaign slogan, Make America Great Again. His intentions may be pure, but his promise will prove impossible to keep. Request Gerald Flurry's new booklet, Great Again, to find out why. Discover the root cause of America's cursed policies, both at home and abroad. Learn where America's moral collapse is leading. See beyond the doom and gloom to the bright future that awaits America. Study our free booklet, Great Again, to prove who truly will make America great again. Over the past eight years, America has withdrawn from the world scene. This trend figures to continue under Mr. Trump, although for different reasons. Request our free reprint article, The Times of the Gentiles, to learn who will fill the power void as America turns inward. America has been the unquestioned world leader for decades, but that is about to change. To understand why America's power is rapidly slipping away, read The Times of the Gentiles. You will also receive a special trumpet letter from Gerald Flurry. Curses have descended upon America. You need to know why. Understand how God is carefully measuring punishment for the world's greatest nation. Discover the only way to escape impending disaster. Learn the formula for spiritual success during the world's darkest days. All of our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request Great Again, The Times of the Gentiles, and your copy of Gerald Fleury's special trumpet letter. Order today.